Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Sunday, June 30th, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our psalm for today is Psalm 67. Psalm 67. For the choir director, with stringed instruments, a song, a song. May God be gracious to us and bless us. May he make his face shine upon us, so that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations rejoice and shout for joy, for you judge the peoples with fairness and lead the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has produced its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. God had made a covenant with Abraham that he and all of his descendants should be circumcised. Normally, that circumcision would have taken place on the eighth day of an Israelite boy's life. However, while the people of Israel were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, they were not able to carry out that circumcision as would have been normally scheduled when the child was one week old. So now that the Israelites have ended their wandering and that they have entered the promised land, it is time for all of the Israelite males um, to be circumcised. And so they're going to take care of that before they begin their uh, conquest of, is of the land of, of Canaan. And then the Lord will lay out his plan for Israel's conquest of the first city that they will encounter in the land of Canaan, the city of Jericho. When all the Amorite kings across the Jordan to the west, and all the Canaanite kings near the sea, heard how the Lord had dried up the water of the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over, they lost heart and their courage failed because of the Israelites. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelite men again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelite men at Gebeath Ha'areloth. -ha this is the reason Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness along the way after they had come out of Egypt. Though all the people who came out were circumcised, none of the people born in the wilderness along the way were circumcised after they had come out of Egypt. For the Israelites wandered in the wilderness forty years until all the nation's men of war who came out of Egypt had died off, because they did not obey the Lord. So the Lord vowed never to let them see the land he had sworn to their ancestors to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. He raised up their sons in their place. It was these Joshua circumcised. They were still uncircumcised since they had not been circumcised along the way. After the nation had been circumcised, they stayed where they were in the camp until they recovered. The Lord then said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the disgrace of Egypt from you. Therefore, that place is still called Gilgal today. While the Israelites camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they observed the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month. The day after Passover, they ate unleavened bread and roasted grain from the produce of the land. And the day after they ate from the produce of the land, the manna ceased. Since there was no more manna for the Israelites, they ate from the crops of the land of Canaan that year. When Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua approached him and asked, Are you for us or for, your, for our enemies? Neither, he replied. I have now come as commander of the Lord's army. 
Then Joshua bowed with his face to the ground in homage and asked him, What does my Lord want to say to, to his servant? The commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did that. Now Jericho was strongly fortified because of the Israelites, no one leaving or entering. The Lord said to Joshua, Look, I have handed Jericho, its king, and its best soldiers over to you. March around the city with all the men of war, circling the city one time. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horns trumpets in front of the ark. But on the seventh day, march around the city seven times, while the priests blow the ram's horns. When there is a prolonged blast of the horn and you hear its sound, have all the troops give a mighty shout. Then the city wall will collapse, and the troops will advance, each man straight ahead. We now turn in the book of Acts to one of the most significant events in the history of the early Christian church. In the Old Testament, God had uh, put a kind of a hedge of separation around the people of Israel, not to keep his good news about a coming savior away from the Gentiles, but to keep his chosen people Israel intact until the savior came. And so Jews and Gentiles did not get together much, certainly not in any sort of formal setting or in any sort of formal religious setting. That is about to change. The Lord is going to send a vision to a, a Roman centurion named Cornelius, and he is going to send men to get Peter to come and preach to him. And then the Lord is also going to give a vision to Peter to indicate to him that the barriers that once had been there between Jews and Gentiles now had outlived their purpose, and it was time for them to come down. There was a man in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment. He was a devout man and feared God along with his whole household. He did many charitable deeds for the Jewish people and always prayed to God. About three in the afternoon, he distinctly saw in a vision an angel of God who came in and said to him, Cornelius. Staring at him in awe, he said, What is it, Lord? The angel told him, Your prayers and your acts of charity have ascended as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa and call for Simon, who is also named Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, who was one of those who attended him. After explaining everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they were traveling and nearing the city, Peter went up to pray on the roof about noon. He became hungry and wanted to eat. But while they were preaching, preparing something, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and an object that resembled a large sheet coming down, being lowered by its four corners to the earth. In it, there were all the four-footed animals and reptiles of the earth and the birds of the sky. A voice said to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. No, Lord, Peter said, for I have never eaten anything impure or ritually unclean. Again, a second time, the voice said to him, What God has made clean, do not call impure. This happened three times, and suddenly the object was taken up into heaven. While Peter was deeply perplexed about what the vision had, he had seen might mean, right away the men who had been sent by Cornelius, having asked directions to Simon's house, stood at the gate. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.